What up, folks? It's your man, NG. I'm Double G, hitting you with a brand spanking new top 10. That's right. Today, we're going to hop into 10 of the most incredible producers who also rap. But before we go any further, I'm going to need you to give this video a like and thumbs up. And if you don't enjoy it by the end of the video, give it a thumbs down. No hard feelings, right? All right. Cool. Share with your folks if you think they enjoy stuff like this. We're about to hop into this top 10. I'm going to break it down to you by artists, and I'm going to tell you which group and collective that they're from. I'm going to let you know what city or region that they represent. And one of my low-key favorite bangers from them. Also, I'm going to give you one of my favorite quotes. So let's go ahead and hop right into this uh, most incredible producers who also rap. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna start at number 10. Number 10, all right, this dude is super iconic. We know him, we love him. Number 10, let me get to it, it's Pharrell Williams, Mr. <laughs> Neptunes himself, Mr. N-E-R-D. He's part of a group of super producers and MCs and artists. They were called the Super Friends and they represented Virginia. Um, he is one of those super, produ super producers that everybody loves, man. Um, yo, he's a hip hop mogul and he also gets down in the booth. Some of my favorite joints, uh, one of my most low-key favorite joints is the lavish joint that he has with Twista, yo. I don't know if you've seen that video of Twista. He's like rapping fast to like some dude shooting. <laughs> Pretty insane. But anyway, that song Lavish, P, Pharrell, he gets off on that song. His flow is one of his best. I love that joint. Check it out if you never heard it. And when it comes to one of my favorite verses and lines from from Pharrell, it has to come from Drop It Like It's Hot, yo. I love the remix with Jay-Z, but on the first one, when Pharrell goes like, kill it with a B, I know kill it in the street, that make you feel like you're chilling like chinchilla in the heat. That shit was hard. I probably said it wrong a little bit, but yo, that part was tight. I was like, when I first heard it, I was in high school. I was like, yo. That flow, that, 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 the bars, it was just tight. All right, man, we're gonna hop into this next one. We're gonna keep it within the same region, within the same Super Friends group. Actually, number nine on my most incredible producers who also rap. We got Missy Elliott, yo. Missy Elliott, she was from a group, an R&B group called Sister back in the day. They disbanded, and then she became part of this group, this collective called Swing Mob. They were also known as the Basement Crew. They're out of Virginia, and she was also part of the Super Friends, which is part of the group that Pharrell represented too. It's Virginia people, they're over there. You got Pusha T, there's a bunch of people, Timberland, Magoo, uh, Aliyah, Genuine, um, Playa, all those people were involved with it um, from the 90s. But yo, she was recently inducted into the uh, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, so shout out to Missy Elliott, man. She's one of the dopest singers, songwriters, rappers. One of my low-key favorite joints by her is actually Knock Knock by Monica. Uh, the singer from Atlanta, she's featuring um, Missy on this joint. It's also co-produced by Kanye. Uh, he did it, uh, he gave her the beat from one of his old uh, mixtapes. It's a joint called Apologize. You should check that out. It has a sick sample in it. But anyway, if you haven't heard Knock Knock, go check that out. That's a super low key one. It has Missy on it. She's rapping towards the end and it's uh, co the beat switches. It goes from like a Kanye beat to a Missy beat back to a Kanye beat. It's pretty dope. And then one of my favorite joints, one of my favorite bars from her, uh, one of my favorite quotes come from one of my favorite jams ever, Make It Hot from 1998, Nicole Ray, Mocha, it's Timbaland. It's co-produced by Missy. This joint, I love this joint. The melody is so beautiful. It's one of those songs that's like, damn, I'm always gonna remember this song. It just touches me. It's one of my favorite joints ever. I love the part when she's like, I glide like skates, meet with no Timberland. It's like puff with no mace. <laughs> that part is so tight. She sounds so cool. But all right, we're gonna move into number eight, move right along with this list. We got Jermaine Dupree. He is representing the So So Deaf record label coming out of Atlanta. Now this dude is a phenomenal chameleon. He's a songwriter, he's a rapper, he's a he is the career resuscitator. He will bring your career back to life. One of my favorite local key jam from Jermaine Dupri is actually let's talk about it and it's it's that clips joint it's produced by Pharrell we're gonna keep it you see how I did that you see 10 9 8 how everybody connected yeah so that's one of my favorite joints right there that beat used to get stuck in my head back in high school one of my favorite bars though it actually come from gotta get you and this one co-produced by did you guess it? It's co-produced by Missy Elliott, yo. She was rapping in the background, and um, yo, I never noticed it until actually recently when I was doing some research. I was like, hold up, that female voice is actually Missy, and I don't know how I didn't. Maybe I did know that. I'm pretty sure there's a video for this. But anyway, man, 
one of my favorite verses though from Jermaine Dupri. Uh, all we wanna do is party with you. The joint with Usher in the brat. He says, get goosebumps when the baseline thumps so fat. Call me Professor Clump. That part is so hard, man. I was like in the sixth grade or something when that song came out. That shit was hard when I first heard it. It's one of those joints I used to ride around with my mother and we used to be listening to it on the radio. Shout out to 92.3 The Beat back in the, back in the 90s in LA, yo. Before uh, Power 106 became like the shit. After K Day went to the better. Anyway, we're gonna move right along with the list. Hit the likes if you're enjoying this joint. Yo, we hit number seven right now. And this dude, he's representing uh, North Carolina, my man, uh, Dream Yo, J. Cole. He's one of the most incredible producers who rap. Now, initially, I was not into J. Cole's music. There were a couple songs that I heard. I thought he was kind of corny. I'll be honest, I thought he was kind of corny, but my lady, she, she told me to listen to that 2014 Forest Hills Drive album. I think that came out um, the week of our birthday or something, or something around that time. We have a birthday that's a day apart, me and my lady. So it's actually like in two weeks. So if you want to um, hit the like, <laughs> you can do that. All right, man. Yeah, J. Cole, man. He's one of those new age goats, greatest of all times, if you will. And he is a producer, rapper, pro basketballer. And one of my favorite low-key joints from him is Middle Child. It was just like this random single that he dropped. He was giving us this introspective banger talking about being in the middle of the generation of the young folks and the older folks in hip hop and how he stood his ground and uh, pretty much where he, he where he stands. And one of my favorite quotes actually comes from the, the, the joint from uh, the off season, his last album. It's called Amari. I think that's what it's called. He says, I never fall out with the bro. Hate it when your family turns into foe. He goes, off he goes off man he has like such a sick ass flow on his his it's like he kind of like uh doesn't pronounce the words too hard like enunciate they kind of just weave into each other it's almost like he's doing the mumble rap thing but <laughs> you can understand what he's actually saying anyway one of my favorite quotes I already said it. So we're going to go ahead and move right into number six, yo. Number six, representing the native tongues out of NYC. We got the beat next. I'm talking about the Latino Godfathers of Boom Bap Jazz Rap from New York. Psycho Les and Juju, they were both producers who rap. And man, they gave us quite a few hits back in the day. And quite a few people have sampled even their songs that are sampling other songs. But one of my lowest of low key jams is Let Off a Couple. I actually heard that one on a escape video back in the day. I can't remember which video it was, but I know it had Kareem Campbell in it. It might have been a City Stars video. Paul Rodriguez is in it for sure. Anyway, yo, the beat nuts, Psycho Les, Les, and Juju. One of my favorite bars, I'm gonna have to go and get it from off the books. Now this one features Big Pun, gives an incredible verse, and it actually fe also features uh, Cuban Link. Now this joint, dun, da, 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 dun, da, 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 off the books this year, making mad money off the books this year. Ain't nothing but crooks in here, getting mad money off the books in here. Yo, go, go. That joint, man, when I was younger, like in like the eighth or the ninth grade, I couldn't figure out who it was. I was like, damn, I know it was the Beat Nuts, but I didn't know the name of the song. And I used to hear it all the time on the radio and I'd be like, yo, what is this? And then I finally recorded it or something off the radio. And then my cousin found out, told me who it was. I think my cousin Bridget, she probably told me who it was. And then she gave me a CD where, uh, it was a mixtape CD. I don't know. It was probably like one of those joints that somebody handed to her, like on the corner or something. Or maybe she bought it from somebody at a 7-Eleven, but it had it on there. Off the books, man. My, my favorite part actually comes from when Les raps. I mentioned in one of my other videos, I like when he, when he raps. Feeling marvelous, street pharmacist, twist arbalus, arbalus is cheese. We like to twist those out here. Anyway, we're gonna hop into number five. We're gonna bring it to my hometown, uh, LA. We're gonna bring it to where I was born, uh, Compton. We're gonna bring it to one of the goats, uh, DJ Quick. Yo, one of the godfathers of G-Funk. This dude, he got the name DJ Quick from being known for being able to make beats like that. This dude is a multi-instrumentalist. Yo, he's one of the pioneers of G-Funk, like I said, and I think he's totally underrated as an MC. Yo, DJ Quick, I love so many of his joints, man. He has like instrumental joints, he has joints, party joints, he has introspective joints, he has he has diss songs, man. He's dissing other MCs from Compton, like MC8. Yo, bro, he was getting off, man, in the 90s. And if you, I don't know, I know some people don't like him because some people say his voice sounds weird, but I never really thought so. And maybe just because I grew up listening to DJ Quick. But anyway, 
<laughs> one of my favorite joints that's low key of the low key slow key is we still party i think that's off the rhythmalism album back in 98 i used to listen to that joint back in like the sixth grade or whatever but anyway my favorite bars actually come from get at me yo he says and if you approach me wrong i'm a clown first nigga run up first down and you hear the sound effect from madden 95 yo <laughs> It's pretty dope. And then I also love on uh on um safe and, not safe and sound, but um dollars and cents when he's dissing MCA. He says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eight, you can't win. And then he says you left out the G cause the G ain't in you because MCA spells his name without the G. Anyway, DJ Quick is one of the most incredible producers who can rap, man. The multi instrumentalist G Funk Pioneer. Holla. Yo, we're gonna hop into number four and keep it right over here. Ooh, super close to my hometown Gardena. We're gonna go to the South Bay area. I'm talking about this dude is super popping right now. We've seen him evolve so much. I'm a talking about Tyler the Crater. Yo, Mr. Odd Future himself representing Ladera Hawthorne. That's right next to me in Gardena. Yo, he's a mega producer, future fashion icon music icon film icon freaking festival icon this dude just threw a festival like two weeks ago i went to the one back in 2013 it was low key but it was still incredible and big it's super huge now they have to do it at the dodger stadium yo this dude is so incredible you can tell that he's basically this offspring of pharrell easy jay-z lil wing eminem and he has some buster rhymes and missy influence in there one of my favorite low-key cuts from tyler come from the joint cherry bomb album i know a lot of people don't like that and the mixing was kind of it was kind of crazy on there you can't hear some of the vocals as well as you may want to but buffalo is my joint on that one it's busting with some bars and it's busting with the bars man and it's got a pretty sick beat to me and it gets me pretty hype I, plus i also like the little intro from uh i'm forgetting the guy's name but uh he gives him a little intro <laughs> and, uh, with some vocals in the background. One of my favorite bars, though, actually comes from the Call Me If You Get Lost album, where he says, uh, Hold up, black boy, hop out. Shout out to my mother and my father. Hold up. Rolls Royce pull up, black boy, hop out. Shout out to my mama and my papa didn't pull out. That shit was hard as fuck when I heard it. What was that, two years ago when it first dropped? I was like, damn, this nigga did it again. Tyler is one underrated lyricist, man. And he is an incredible producer. You can hear his growth and his progression. If you listen to his first album up to now, how much better he is. And then sometimes you hear him like talk about it. He's like, I be practicing, man. Why y'all over there bullshitting, doing nothing with your lives. I'm practicing. I'm becoming better. You can hear it, man. Tyler, the created one of the most incredible producers. Also raps. He will rap circles around most of these niggas that are popping right now. He does already. Anyway, we're going to move into number three. You can definitely hear this guy's influence in Tyler, too. But you see how I'm keeping everything threaded together? Everybody's influenced by each other and connected to each other. That's why you should hit the like right now. Anyway, we're going to move into number three. Mr. Outcast himself, Andre 3000, representing the Dungeon family from ATL, my number one rapper of all time. Interchangeable, him and Lupe. Yeah, the god by the granddaddy of individuality. He's an actor. He's a one-man band. He's a diamond record producer. Yo, one of my favorite low-key bangers is Hollywood Divorce, yo. I didn't even realize that Andre and, and um, Big Boy were producing so many of their own tracks, yo. But yo, Hollywood Divorce features Lil Wayne and Snoop. And this is one of my favorite joints. It comes from the Idlewild album in 2006. Most people kind of treated that like it was just a soundtrack album, but they actually said it was their album. So that's a low-key banger. It's got some low-key bangers on there. And Hollywood Divorce is one of my favorite ones. You should check that one out. But one of my favorite bars, there's so many of them when it comes to Andre. I can't always remember them off the top of my head, but one of my favorite ones actually comes from the uh, Speaker Box Love Below album when he says, uh, in a life, uh, a life in the Day of Benjamin Andre, he says, I meet Muslims, gangsters, bitches, rastas, and macaroni niggas, imposters. When I first heard that, I was like, yo, what the fuck did this nigga just say? I had to rewind it and put that shit on repeat. I think I was walking home I was walking home super late one night. I, I had a night shift and I was like, let me just walk four miles home at nighttime. Crazy in, in, in the city. Somebody could have got me real quick. <laughs> but anyway, especially with some earbuds on, banging outcasts and looking super happy and shit, like tripping off of Andre's lyrics. I'm like, yo, 
when I heard that, I was like, yo, because he's telling the story of his life, uh, becoming the artist that he was at the point, up until that point, and falling in love with um, Erica Badu. He has another line in there where he says um, he has a daughter, or he has a son by the name of Seven, and he's five, but by the time they do the mix, he'll be six. I was like, God damn, you hear that motorcycle? But anyway, I was like, God damn, when he said that, I was like, yo, this nigga is ill, Andre 3000. He just dropped a woodwind album where he's playing all types of woodwind and, um, yeah, those types of instruments, flutes and such things, oboes and <laughs> recorder. No, it's actually pretty dope if you uh, if you have an ear for music or if you just like music or if you want to relax. We listened to it when it came out and we relaxed the fuck out. We were actually like a calm business soothed us this fuck down. We had talked about our days and chilled the fuck out. It's actually pretty good music. You should check it out if you're into it. If you're looking at it from a rap perspective, you're not going to get any of that. And there's actually a, um, a warning on the uh, album to let you know you're not going to get rap. Although I think he kind of gave us a little bit of bars with the titles. Anyway, Andre 3000, he's number three on my most incredible producers who rap. If you didn't know, he makes a lot of those beats. Yeah, he does. A lot of those songs that you love from Outkast, Andre and Big Boy themselves, they produced it. We're going to move into number two because we got to get into it, yo. I'm talking about Mr. Native Tongues. We mentioned somebody from Native Tongues earlier, remember? Yeah, we're going to take it back to NYC. We're going to take it to ATCQ. I'm about Tribe Called Quest. I'm talking about Q-Tip, yo. Q-Tip, quite possibly the godfather of jazz rap, the GOAT, the mastermind. One of my low-key favorite joints is Move, which was off of, uh, I think, his second solo album back in, like, 2006 or 2007. But it has, like, this, uh, it has this uh, Jackson 5, Michael Jackson sample in it. Oh, move it. Ooh, move it. Yeah. I'm not doing it right now, but I'm not doing it right. But yo, that, the way he chopped it and then the beat changes, man, it's just incredible. You should listen to it if you get the chance. Move by Q-Tip. But one of my favorite joints, one of my favorite bars, and one of my favorite deliveries, it actually comes from the classic joint, Award Tour. I love the part where he says, I'm bugging out, but let me get back because they're wet and naked. They're wet and tell they are the, they are the brothers. I learned how to build mics in my workshop, Chad. So give me this award and let's not make it the last. Yo, I kind of butchered it a little bit, but yo, Q-Tip, quite possibly the GOAT of jazz rap and one of the greatest rappers. And he's definitely influenced the line of rappers and MCs that are on this list before him. We're going to go ahead and hop into number one. But before we do that, make sure you go ahead and hit the like. And um, we'll continue on right now because number one, number one. All right, man. Y'all already know where I'm going. Number one, Mr. Chicago himself. Mr. Man of the Century, Mr. Good Music, Mr. ROC, Mr. Yeezy, yay, Kanye, Omari West, the dude himself, the fashion icon, the modern day renaissance man, Kanye West, man, he, ah, his story is incredible, but yo, he possibly is the greatest producer who also raps. Um, I know some, he might catch some slack because he uses uh, a team of writers sometimes, but when I take it back to Kanye's earlier days, I'm like, I know they say Consequence helped him write some of those drums, but either way, man, Kanye was spitting some of those bars and they used to be hitting crazy, man. And it's like why we fell in love with this music, yo. But one of my favorite, one of my most low key of joints is the Consequence joint featuring John Legend. It's called Grammy Family. Grammy family. Yo, if you've never heard that, Kanye goes off on that. But yo, the most important, the most incredible, my favorite ever line or bar from Kanye is actually from Keep the Receipt featuring ODB. It's on the Freshman Adjustment mixtape that came out right before College Dropout, which has a bunch of songs that you might know and recognize that actually became songs like, uh, all falls down. You'll hear like the original version of that. You hear him rapping and Kanye rapping over some Q-tip beats. <laughs> you hear you hear some some cool stuff. But my joint of all, my favorite joint from Kanye of all time. My favorite joint, my favorite bar from Kanye. Keep the receipt featuring ODB, ODB, Old Dirty Bastard, AKA Dirt Me Great. It's the joint where he goes like, stop talking the shit that you've been talking. Your broke ass mama couldn't afford that abortion. So tell me how the hell she gonna afford that coffin. And I done sat back and seen it all too often. Yo, 
That's my favorite Kanye bar, man. He's the most incredible producer. He's a rapper. One of the greatest artists of all time, if not the greatest of artists of all time. I don't know. Let me know how you feel about this list. Let me know how you would rearrange it. Let me know who you would add or subtract from this list. Hit me in the comments below. Let me know if you enjoyed it. If you did or didn't, um, it's all good, man. I appreciate you sticking around with me in this video. I just dropped a brand new joint with my man Insomnia called uh, Bagpipe Dreams. So you, can, <laughs> you should really go check that out. That shit is off the hinges. It's one of my dope songs ever it's incredible i appreciate you sticking with me through this top 10 list it's been yo i got some honorary mentions up in here so let me get to a hot mac miller which i told you i don't really listen to his music that much but i have heard some of the songs and they were pretty good i was like pretty impressed but we also have lp we have dr j he's not always writing this right but we always have a dope verse from dr Dre when he splits on one of his old on beats we have havoc from uh prodigy i mean havoc from mob deep he gets off but lauren hill she's another incredible producer if she really did produce that but russ shout out to russ uh you know yeah, russ kick it down he's pretty uh he's above average with the rapping and above average for making him beats shout out to mf doom rest in peace to him crazy bone what's up with him how's his health i'm not too sure but yo those are some of the most incredible producers who rap let me know who i missed on this list let me know what you think i appreciate you sticking with me through this top 10 list it's been another one uh it's your man ng on double g hit the like and uh check out my new song yo check out the new merch i'm gonna link everything in the description below and it's gonna be pinned to the top comment yo hit me in the comments let me know what you're feeling about this video i'll see y'all in the next one it's your man ng on double g us the folks peace we blast in a bad pipe tronics and we thrash in a half-assed